Scorpions and their allies, whip scorpions and tailless whip scorpions, are all arachnids related to spiders. They're all ancient creatures and amongst the strangest to walk the planet. Whip scorpions and tailless whip scorpions are virtually unknown to most people. Though these creatures are much more familiar. Scorpions, they're some of the most feared animals in deserts and jungles right the way around the world. But this fear really is quite misplaced. They're intricate and beautiful little animals with their own stories. Each scorpion has two claws, eight legs, and a venomous sting in its tail. But not all scorpions are the same. There are two main types of scorpions, yellow sand-colored desert scorpions, and generally larger black jungle scorpions. And they're quite different. The yellow sand-colored desert scorpions usually have smaller claws and more powerful venomous stings in their tails. These guys rely on their powerful venom to kill and overpower their prey. The black jungle scorpions, on the other hand, are usually larger, and often they have much bigger and more powerful claws and weaker venom in their tails. These guys rely on their claws to kill and rip up their prey, and can often tackle larger animals. There are over 1,750 species of scorpions that occur right the way around the world. Of those animals, only about 25 are known to be lethal to mankind. Most of them have stings that are like a painful bee sting, but don't cause serious or long-term harm in humans. There's still a lot we don't know about scorpions. For example, for an unknown mysterious reason, they glow under UV light, and often they glow different colors. I've got a UV light here, so if we turn off all the other lights in this room, we might just see them glow. If you thought scorpions were strange, there are several other allied groups of arachnids that are even more unusual. This little guy down here, this is a vinegaroon. He looks like a cross between a scorpion and a spider, but actually it's a different group altogether. He doesn't have a venomous sting at all, but he has different claws at the front. They're not like a scorpion's claws that snip and pinch. These guys have claws that grab and crush they grab their victim and bring it up against their body and crush it. They're incredibly powerful. Over here, this is a tailless whip scorpion. These guys like to live in dark places and particularly caves, and they have a completely different strategy altogether to capture their prey. 
They're not as powerful as the vinegrooms and the scorpions, but they have incredibly long front limbs that extend out many, many times their body length. They can snatch victims in the darkness and bring them close to their powerful mouth jaws at the front. They really do look like something out of a science fiction alien movie. Many species of scorpions are very easy to keep and make really interesting pets. All you need is a tank like this one. Make sure it's quite high vertically because scorpions can climb quite well. You then need to put in some substrate like this. They're really not fussy. You can use bark or peat or leaf mold, but a good substrate like this will, will be, be suitable for most species. You can buy scorpions from most pet shops and then, depending upon the species, get a suitably large container, at least eight times the length of the scorpion, so he has some area to, to scuttle around in. Then, put in something that the scorpion can shelter under, for example, a piece of cork bark, so that during the bright conditions during the day, they've got just a place to retreat to and hide. Always remember, scorpions are tropical animals, so they need uh, a heat pad and need to be kept above 25 deg degrees centigrade, so make sure you keep them nice and warm. And always keep the lid on the tank because they, they can escape. You don't want a scorpion escaping and giving a surprise in the middle of the night. Then, of course, you must feed scorpions. Scorpions need live prey to eat. They won't eat dead prey. So you need to buy crickets or similar livestock from your local pet shop. All insect prey should be no more than about half the length of the scorpion, ideally smaller, so the scorpion will have no problem catching it and gobbling it up and make sure that you remove any dead insects that die in the tank before the scorpion can eat them, so that the scorpion's habitat remains nice and clean. You might see online people holding scorpions in their hands and petting them, but this really isn't a good idea. All scorpions can sting, and it's better to leave them in their cage than observe them from behind glass. The related groups of arachnids, the vinegrooms in particular, have very similar requirements to the scorpions. Vinegrooms generally like darker conditions, so if you can provide a, a slightly darker environment for the vinegrooms, they'll be happy. The tailless whip scorpions do have slightly different requirements. They like to hide under and shelter in coves like their habitats in the wild. So it's a good idea to put a large piece of bark that they can comfortably climb under and they'll often hang on the underside of the bark in total darkness. Some people actually make elaborate caves out of polystyrene or little tables and often you'll find your tailless whip scorpion on the underside hanging on to the table where it's darkest. When you feed the tailless whip scorpions, these guys need much smaller prey items because of the structure of their claws. So generally keep their prey less than about a quarter of the size of their body and they'll be really happy. For more information about how to keep a wide range of animals, please visit the Weird and Wonderful Pets website where you can download a free PDF with detailed culture information. Please visit the Weird and Wonderful Pets website where you can secure your copy of the accompanying book.